All right, so here's an example of some of the rough stuff you can find at the gym show. This is Petersite. It is one of my favorite gemstones here. But here's what it looks like in the rough. Well, see how that sheen it still comes up on camera, but you can tell even though it's a rough state, it's got some really incredible features to it. But this one here, uh, this is the tiger eye in it, in the blue. It really has some chatoyancy. It's a nice stone. And when you spray it, sometimes I'll have like spray bottles out here. So if you take a uh, squirt bottle here, and what you'll see people doing is squirting them, and it'll bring out the, uh, so you can see what, you know, that's, those aren't good examples either. Sometimes you'll see people spit on the rocks, <laughs> funny enough to see what it looks like when it's polished. But yeah, this one when it's polished is a really nice looking stone. You have to get it, there we go. Look at that. So here's a piece of uh, native copper. This comes from, I think, uh, Michigan. Giant chunk of copper. So, and you know, just all kinds of variety of specimens and quartzes, crystals. Look at those things. Okay, we're just dropping off. We've got some spirit quartz and ammonites in here. So, First and then round. We're gonna, yeah, <laughs> this is just round one. We've got to go back out and get we're more. We're just dropping them and then heading back out. Yeah. All right, here we are. 22nd Street Show. Popping in here. This is uh, one of these gigantic tents that you can see from the freeway. There's I-10 up there. There's a mountain. Just to give you a reference point. That's an iconic Tucson landmark. So in here, this is, uh, the, what, the third show we've been to. Kind of technically the second, but this is the parking lot. It's completely full. This is uh, probably a busier part of the show, too, because it's the weekend, so this is open to the public. The other one we were at was wholesale only. But these shows, some of them open to the public, like this one is gonna be a lot more crowded. And if you come to these shows, there's usually concession stands at Kino Park, where we'll probably go tomorrow. But this one's got, you know, coffee stands and stuff too. But be, be prepared to do a lot of walking if you come to these shows. I wanna wear like uh, walking shoes. Uh, today, it's like, what? 70, 70 yeah, 71. It feels like 80. <laughs> It's nice, so. so yeah, here's the tent I was showing you from the outside, and then they, they extend down for like a quarter mile. Okay. Rock on. Ah, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. See, oh, that's a sloth, I think. It looks like a saber tooth, maybe. <laughs> Some knives, handmade knives. Oh, I don't know, some of these shows you can't film in. Oh man, there's so much. I mean, really, if you ever come to the show and you want to buy, you have to be super disciplined. You have to like stay with it because it's like you get caught up in it. I mean, really, you get really, there's so many cool things here. I mean, it's just, if you don't restrain yourself, you're going to just go out of control. And really the time constraint too, because you can see we've only been to the third show and it's it's absolutely enormous. It's beyond description how big it is. Maybe Christine, when she's out vlogging, can get you an idea too. This one's got fluorescent minerals here. Yeah. Really like that effect. I was thinking of getting uh, some fluorescent um, black lights. Partly for my uh, uranium glass, but partly just to find minerals out and about. Uh, but again, it's early in the show. The show's only been going a few days. We're only in the second tent at this 22nd street show. But uh, yeah, this one we came to one year. I think we got, this was the last tent we came to and there was only like, literally they were bagging stuff up. They were just, you know, there was a few things out the guy sold us. We're at Broken River yeah. Lining. So she so showed us this beautiful one. piece. So you can see the veins and when we take it out, it naturally wants to release its pressure and split naturally and that's what you get. Oh, I mean, look at the color It's just incredible that. in person wow. to see how vibrant that is. It yeah. looks like it's lit from the yeah, inside. Yeah, it does. It's so iridescent and it just shines up at you. No, I think I was talking to you last year. You said it takes like three days to get to your uh, mine. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. correct. I was looking at the, it takes them like way to get out there in the outback. Or is, is this where you get your... Yeah, yeah, this is our two leases. It's closer to Alice Springs. Um, <laughs> and we're closer to Cairns, really. So it's uh, 1,200 k's to get out there, but they're not good roads. The last 50 kilometers takes us an hour and a half. Wow. 
Mm. Yeah, and then so imagine getting there and having all the equipment and bringing the stuff and getting to Tucson and polishing it. And yeah. I, I mean, it just every time I come here, I just, yeah. Wow. That's where we live for six to eight months of the year. Really? Yeah. Um, and our closest neighbor, that's beautiful country, is there, that white spot right there, <laughs> 16 kilometers away. Wow. Mm. Well, you don't have to worry about wildfires out there. Huh? No, just stamp your feet if there's a wildfire. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so that's our other mining lease. So when, when, how the opals formed in Australia, it's a lot to do with the inland sea that was there. So you're looking for faults and veins of, of down there. So through the sandstone, there's silica rich penetrated down there and went into what we call sandstone boulders and the boulder levels usually occur the same and there it is in the wall in situ oh, wow. so what we do is top and tail if that's opal there we take the top off the boulder and the bottom off the boulder and then you have a vein all the way around and you just tap it gently and you will get oh. um, the and that's natural, all natural. It hasn't been polished. That's what nature oh, does. Oh, really? No. Wow. And the Same as that. Smooth, yeah, it's I glass mean. smooth. Yeah. Another one. Is that one you would have seen? Oh, nice. Oh. And that's, again, not been polished at all. It's just nature. See that split oh, through yeah. there? So when you take these boulders out of the wall, it's all the pressure of millions of years is released and so the opal is the softest part of the, the rock so it just wants to give and split and that's what happens. Oh. Here's another split. I'll just show you where we're going. So the, again, the vein is exposed, tap, tap. And, you oh. get, and that's the water level. You can see where the oh, silicas right. run through. Yeah. Huh. I think this is Christine's favorite gemstone. It is, it is. I love Boulder Opal. <laughs> I'll just put it up. That mightn't film that too well. Yeah, it never, uh, it's like filming a sunset. You can yeah. never really appreciate yeah. it. When she's trying to sell online, you try to capture the image. Uh, oh, tell the me about it. It's, <laughs> it's just, just, you just want to die. There's some that just won't. Yeah, it looks good in person, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> This is the one that looks like the amylite. Yeah, from, uh, absolutely. Uh, which I guess may be the same type of process. It's, uh, you know, oh, the, I think the, they, yeah, the, the water and, and the, the. That's probably quite right. Yeah. Have you seen this one? I don't think we. No. Well, I don't recall that we. I don't think so. so. It's um, it's polished on the outside, but we haven't polished it on the inside. But you can see. See how that's splitting through there, the pressure's released. But when it becomes pinched at the back here, the rock won't let go, so it won't split any further. But if I put a saw through there and expose the vein all the way around, you'd just have to go tap, tap, and it would be over. But this one, it split naturally. Oh, wow. And so. How long have you ha uh, been mining the opals there? In, uh... 35 years, oh, but yeah. we've only gone direct to the market in the last five. Oh yeah. The dealers wouldn't buy this off us. If we were on the mining site, they'd say, chop it all up, yeah. make it into stones. Uh -huh. Wow. It looks... And that split naturally, that's all natural. Yeah, Polished. yeah, but it's like glass when yeah. it splits, it's, um, yeah. Wow, that is just... But believe oh, me, gorgeous. on the video it won't show. I know. It just I know. dies a thousand deaths and you say, what piece of rubbish is that? <laughs> the eye must be really sophisticated, huh? Yeah, you really. Know? Yeah. 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 Okay, you guys, it's really hard to see the boulder opal on camera, but I will post their information below if you want to find them. They have an Instagram account, so they're, they're one of my favorite companies that come here to Tucson for the gym shows. This is a uh, Marcus Rude Buddha. Uh, anyways, how you say their name? But they've got really nice specimens here. They're at the Pueblo Inn, and uh, last year I came. Uh, they had this piece of uh, gold specimen. It was like a wire. But yeah, they've got. If you ever come to the Pueblo show, you definitely need to check out this booth because they have. Uh, what were you checking out over there? You show me the. Uh, um, well, oh, this first, is your I favorite. Love it. I love the wow. sunny stones. Yeah, that just this is like it's imperial topaz. Yeah. It's called, and you know it's like a lot of these. I mean, if you're not 
familiar with gemstones and don't ever say this around a vendor but it, oh. it looks like glass i mean some of them i mean they're so incredibly clear like see that piece of aquamarine back there how you can see straight through it i mean it's there's no inclusions whatsoever but the uh i mean they've got them from all over brazil pakistan and uh, show me another one some of these oh look at that palm trees yeah, Did I know the color is not going to come up on camera because yeah. lights and everything, but it's so vibrant and it's wow. like a rainbow of like lavender. Yeah, and look at that and spectrum things. there. Okay, so there, see that piece of silver? In nature, that's that's how it comes out, that piece of wire. Yeah. Right, yep, there it is. And then up here, the rose, uh, rose quartz, but the crystals, you never see the crystals hardly. Show so me the other everywhere. one over here. That is huge. Yeah. So something else too, if you come to these gym shows, you might see a piece of something that's rose quartz that's like five or ten times the price. Anyways, what it comes down to is the quality of the piece, right? It's always the quality. It's always the quality, not it, the quantity. And, and the, the specimen, the sculptural aspect of it. If it's got a cool shape to it, that right. can be worth many times more than... Uh, like that piece of aquamarine. Yeah, there's a bunch of spines on it. Yeah. Versus, well, you know. Or like this fluorite. Uh -huh. Like that's a really rare piece there. You don't see that. You could spend hours at each show and not cover the half of it. I mean, there's so much to see at all these. Uh, Can I ask a question? What country are you from? Me, so, I come from France. So, but the booth is come from that? Germany. Germany, okay. So yeah, you got all kinds of languages, French, Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, Taiwan. I mean, like every, every country that produces gemstones and then some come to the gym show here. So there's a rose quartz over here that you just show me. Show me. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> oh, yeah, look I don't at that think one. I showed you that one before, but that, that is spectacular. Huh. This one did, did how much? $3,500. $38,000. Oh, Just to wow. give you an idea of how much <laughs> rose quartz crystals, how different it is and how rare it is, it only comes from Brazil. Uh, yeah, Brazil has it. Okay, and there's a gold specimen, if you can point to that one for me, please. Uh, yeah. That one, uh, yeah, that's a natural gold specimen. That one's from Brazil. Mm -hmm. A ton of really interesting crystals come out of Brazil and Pakistan. Afghanistan's got some nice ones. But I've even some... Um, seen some come out of Oregon. I mean, they're just all over. It's just a matter of getting mm -hmm. it here, like the people from... Did you see this pink quartz down here? How cool is that? Um, well, there's a, I think there's a piece over here. I was looking at a piece last year, like that one up there. Uh, I think it was selenite last year, and it had a... <laughs> I still regret not getting it, but it was way, way over our budget. So, uh, you know, there'll be more, or will there? There will be more, but always different. Yeah. Never two pieces are the same. So here's a piece of uh, malachite. Now this one, yeah. it looks really dull, but a lot of these gemstones, you can't recognize the quality until you cut into it. Like each one of those little globs on there, when you slice it, it has like, uh, like rings. rings. Yeah and really polishes up this vibrant emerald green color. It's a really nice gemstone. But, uh, really, it's in the eye of the beholder on some of these, uh, you know, whatever you're into. I was looking last year for uh, some, what was it called? The guy said it's gonna probably gonna be really improbable to find, but uh, I'm still looking. Some asbestos samples, but one of my favorite gemstones is petersite, and that is uh, fossilized asbestos. Well, so is tiger eye, but they call it something else just to make it uh, more desirable. So there's some quartz, and that's from Switzerland. So right, pink. Yeah. This hematite, both of these pieces are from Switzerland. That one looks like a flower. If you can see, it's, well, the camera doesn't pick anything up. Really, you just got to come to the gym show. Just, yeah, just come to the gym show come. at least once. Show me. I just needed to show you this morganite. Oh. Look at that. Uh -huh. I mean, the geometric shape of it and everything. That's from Afghanistan. Uh -huh. And it's on quartz, growing on quartz. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, that quartz, I mean, it's on a stand, but the base, see how they've smashed together. Is yeah, it's like 10 inches tall. Something. I love it. I love all these crazy little creations. 
Show me the one uh, over here you wanted to get a shot. Oh, this aquamarine and yeah. quartz. I mean, look how wintry and just beautiful that is. And that it looks go perfectly in the house. So this is them. Mark, Marcus Budil, Monaco has a picture. I didn't see that specimen in there, but uh, here they are. They're at the Pueblo show, right? Well, every year they've been here at this at this location, which is right by the lobby. So if you come to this one, you can see them. Every once in a while, something will catch your eye just as you're walking by. I was walking by this display booth, and I saw that cute little uh, horny, toad. horny toad. But uh, yeah, so is in the it, lobby, they've got. Is it him I don't know. Or... It's encrusted with jewels, though. So uh, some of the vendors put out little displays here, so you can get an idea of what they've got in their stores. Copper, gemstones, silver, meteorites, ammonites, labradorite. This is the gemstone Laramore. And this is spectralite, that's from Finland. Different carvings, uh, turquoise, opals. Can I get a perspective of you standing next to that? So this giant, well, I'm six feet tall and this thing's taller than me, just to give you an idea. When you come to the gym show, every every show has uh, guides with maps. And then also there's usually a, uh, there's a, you can ride on, it's called the gym shuttle. So it goes to all the shows. So you can just park at one show and go all the shows. But yeah, it's kind of raining today. A lot of vendors are closed because of that. Uh, but usually it doesn't rain. Yeah, we're in the far lot. Yeah, we're in the same far lot too. I'm in the Okay, show me the piece. Okay, I was just picturing them on displays, you know, certain. Uh, uh, and what is this blue argonite? Yeah. Crystal. And like if you had it up on a display where it was featuring uh, how I better give that back. My your <laughs> thumb doesn't look too good in there. But I just, yeah. I love the look of that. And it's so icy and blue. I love those winter colors with just a little bit of the earth tone there. But there's another nice one back there too. Tons, literal tons of crystals. <laughs> Found some that you like though, huh? Yeah, I really. What, you want to go back? Definitely going back to that one. You guys, I just want to show you this piece here. I don't want to touch it because it's $1,300 and it's extremely fragile. It's mesolite with apophyllite from India. Look at how, can you believe that's a stone? How fuzzy that is? And then that beautiful, like crystalline green. It's like a mint green. Anyway, that piece up on a display would be absolutely spectacular with the light shining on it. But yeah, 1300 It's gorgeous though. Nice collector's piece. Got a little cottontail one. Okay, day, uh, whatever. Hey, anyways, we're here again. Gym show. Tons of people. It's a weekend again, but at least it quit raining. There's uh, another one. This is the Pueblo Gym Show. I think we were here before, but a lot of these tents were closed because it was raining, and I don't blame them. It was really cold and rainy at the time. So I'm gonna stop at some of the crystal booths here. Yeah. See. Colombian crystal booths. Yeah, there's some Colombian down further. Okay, I just got in trouble at an Australian booth for calling a. Uh, anyways, I, I called the kangaroo uh, wallaby. Okay, you guys, this is Vita Jewel. These are the, the glass uh, water bottles that I have at home, so I just wanted to show you. This is where I got them, the exact booth. So they're at the Pueblo Gym Show. But yeah, they've got all different kinds, all different varieties, uh, with different stones held in the center. This is one of the big water jugs there. But they've got all kinds, all different shapes. So we just left the Pueblo Show. There's another one here. They call it Red Lion this year, but uh, they changed ownership so much that uh, next year it could be something entirely different. Petrified wood, yeah, carnelian. We normally see it all polished up and everything, but that's what it looks like from. Yeah. Crazy, huh? Rose quartz. Rose quartz. Ocean jasper. Now, this, this is kind of more like 
Uh, Christine did a video once after we left the uh, IMAT show. <laughs> and it was funny because we went out to the uh, quartzite show, which is literally in a gravel lot and, you know, dirt and rocks. But it's a good time. Get all kinds of different, uh, I mean, huge variety. I think I've probably said this so many times that it's probably getting like a broken record. But uh, there's uh, just so much to see. It'll really like blow you away. Like uh, all these crystals from India, Christine was looking at. Did you get a clip of these yesterday? Or? No, I did not. Like, I didn't look know, like, at that thing. Look at how cute that is. I think Christine was really looking at another piece. He might have sold it. Oh, I think he did. Yeah, anyways, so yeah, if you see something at this show and the price is right, you know. I did look at that one yesterday. Yeah, more than nice. Uh, yeah, more so that's something about this show is you've got to know your pricing uh, because we've seen things that are double the price what Christine yes. bought it as. Yeah, he set it on the stand for you there. Like this okay, one. so this is green apophyllite on Mordenite. And then I think there's a little bit of still bite down here at the bottom. But look, that's a really nice specimen. Look how perfect that, that crystal point is. Uh, you, you just don't get that on a popolite. What, what were you saying? This one looks like it's lit from inside. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, the time the time thing is what I was going to say about coming to the show. Yeah. We've uh, been here uh, since they opened at 9 a.m. It's already so. almost 3 or 4 p.m. and we haven't even gone to four of them, four shows yet. So. Yeah. So that's, again, green apophyllite. I think that's more tonight. Or is that mesolite? You know, it kind of looks a little... No, I think that's Morganite. And that's a really nice one there, too. But that one? Hmm, I really want that one. That one's really cool, too. But that's normally how you see the, the green apophyllite. Is, it's more like cubed. You normally don't get the real perfect points like, like that specimen there. It's ideal. <laughs> this is for breaking the geodes. You can, you never know what you're gonna find when you open it. But that's really a spectacular thing about the geodes is when you pop it open, it's like a surprise in everyone. Yeah. So on the outside, they all look open like that. So, so yeah, this guy here, uh, we've seen him here before. There he is. There he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> What is this one? Wow. Uh, so this is root beer selenite from St. David. But yeah, this is something about uh, this, you know, it's got to really be something about digging this stuff out of the ground. You can tell where people get, get into this because it's just a whole world. Agates and geodes. All right, thank you. So we're going to... Uh, Keep going. We got a lot to see. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff from Afghanistan, from yeah. stuff from. Uh, I love the Afghanistan glass too. Have you seen that? Yeah. I know. I've got some at home. I'll show you guys if I haven't showed it yet. But they're really nice. Yeah, exactly. I was trying to tell Christine in a vague way. We're looking for these uh, Uruguayan oh, here's amethyst some. here. Pac Man. So something else uh, about this show that um, I've really <laughs> liked is the diversity of the type of people and that you get, you know, you've got the actual miners like that guy we just showed you back there from yeah. digging the stuff out of the ground and then you've got these uh, multi-million dollar pieces. I don't know if I showed this already either, but a lot of the shows have uh, this gym shuttle that you can get on and it takes you all around. But if I said that, never mind. But uh, something about this show is that the enormity of it there's like, I don't know, I would guess, it, they say it brings a hundred, like $120 million to the Tucson economy. And I think that's just a periphery of like the hotels and restaurants and uh, et cetera that, that you know, are associated with doing the show. So the trucking and you know, even things like renting equipment to move these heavy rocks. You can literally, like I was saying earlier, get stuff for a dollar for over a million dollars. I haven't been to the really expensive show. Um, and by expensive show, I mean the one that has the really high-end sapphire, diamonds, rubies, and pearls. But uh, they're definitely 
like the top jewelers from New York, India, and China will come here and uh, exhibit. Sorry, gotta dodge the obstacles here. But it's uh, definitely, if you get a chance to come to it, it's a once in a lifetime thing, if you're into minerals at all. So there's a courtyard uh, of one of the hotels, it's still in the Red Lion. Garnets, Appetite, Rough Gemstones, Cabs, Crystal, Chrysocolla, Fossil Obsidian, Xylophones, and you see, you can see other different uh, types of merchandise at these shows too, like clothing, uh, purses, dogs. Oh, look at all that Malachite. This Malachite comes from uh, Zambia, I think. Yeah. It's kind of like a blister, polishes up really nicely. Pearls, rough gemstones. Oh yeah, meteorites. This guy's got a huge selection of meteorites too. <laughs> Where's the blanket? Oh, don't want to be, get the blanket. Get the blanket. <laughs> YouTube videos. Okay, what were you looking for? Uh, Tucson. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, and you came, you popped them. Where do you live the rest of the time? Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, well, yeah. welcome to Tucson. Okay, Glad. that was wonderful, but I'm disappointed with the weather this year. I yeah, really, tell me about it, yeah. <laughs> Look at this, yeah. cloudy, okay, well, nice cold, to hey, you. good meeting you, Ali. People from Japan, China, Canada, Russia, Shanghai, Mexico, Colombia. In fact, we haven't seen, uh, we have a friend that we met uh, many years ago at the Quartzite show, sells emeralds from Colombia, and he usually comes out here. Yeah, oh, this is one of some of my favorites. Can we, is this okay we show? Okay. Uh, always got, usually like to ask before we film. But these are my absolute favorite gemstones of all time. It's a pirate, called Piratized Ammonite. And, uh, well, this is just pieces of it, but the, the pyrite has replaced the mineral of the, 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 of the, of the shell, yeah. Here. So there's partially, and uh, wow. I mean, yeah, look at, so that's all pyrite, all the gold in there. Yeah. And the druzy of it. So, in, and these chunks are just ones that, you know, because you can't expect every fossil to come out perfect. Like that is a very, very well preserved piece. Maybe we can get a set. So Christine just saw someone else that found her on YouTube. Watches her, recognize her at the gym show. <laughs> you live here in Tucson then, or? Okay, I live in Western North Carolina. Oh, do you? Yeah. So did you guys fly here or drive? I flew here. Oh, yeah. Okay, I've been here all week. Bought too much. Yeah, I know. Nice to meet you. Hey, bye, bye, Linda. We'll see you around. We're coming see. back tomorrow too. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that, that's uh, the first time we came to the Tucson Gym Show. Somebody was uh, telling us that they spent fifty thousand dollars. I, I was just like, I couldn't believe that somebody spent that much. How much did you spend? You want to say? I probably have spent two thousand yeah. dollars this week. Yeah, I was trying to guess how much you know how much people much. buy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be in like the tens of millions of dollars. I'm getting into the online business. I yeah. have an online oh, store on Etsy. Oh, really? What yeah. do you mean? Yeah. Mind Spirit Soul Gems. Spirit Soul Gems. Now, let me see. Okay. okay. I'll look up your link and I'll put it in my description. Oh, okay. All right. You always get to meet people from all over the world, which makes it even more fun and exciting. It's like a whole culture, you know? It really is. Massage wands, Himalayan spheres, Himalayan quartz, Himalayan salt lamps. <laughs> Chips and salt lamps. I just have to show you these amethysts. Look how pretty those are. Right here, these, the formations, they're so sparkly and glittery. They are so beautiful. Look at the size of this, you guys. You won't be able to see how big this is. Let me... The size of this crystal, you guys. Look at how huge that is. Oh my gosh, and then they have these thrones over here. The chairs. He said I can go sit in any of these. Is it gonna be cold and wet? No. <laughs> bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> Rose quartz bathtub. I love these giant crystals, they're so neat. Alright, we, we just decided to stay parked up at the last one and uh, it's kinda chilly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely one of the 
colder years here in Tucson. Yeah, uh, it's been a really cold winter. I mean, super, super cold. Way too cold for uh, the heat lovers. Yeah, like me. Yeah. They're, they look like ice cubes. Yeah, that's what I like. I like all the icy gemstones. Winter. The Christine's looking for a Lumerian crystal, and uh, I guess the ones with the pink stickers. Are yeah, the they're ones. super rare. Christine was saying they're barcoding on it, Whoa. which is this digital imprinting. So you have to know how to translate the information that is coming it's out. Of the story of the Lumerian right crystals. Here. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different ways the story's been told, but um, basically there was a grid set up by the ancient Lemuria people, and there was crystals that were stuck in the sand, it, it, in the sand, and they were obviously in a certain formation, and they weren't grown there, so they had to have been placed there by people of long, long, long ago. Because, especially because of the location and the fact that they were far away from any sort of pocket or... Oh, really? Uh, That's they're interesting. They're by a civilization that huh. doesn't, um, doesn't necessarily... It's an untrackable civilization, essentially. And they're said to have the information from this civilization held within them. And people are saying that these barcodes are th are the way of translating it. Ah, uh, can um, see. Okay, can you get that to focus, Christine? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Yeah, you just tap it. Okay. So oh, yeah, there it is. So I said, like these yeah. these barcodes, and so now it's it's nearly impossible to get a crystal that, that was actually come that came from that grid, but. We still have some from the collection with these pink ones um, that came from the Comexa mine, which is the original location. Now there's Lemurian seed crystals that are coming from all different states in Brazil that have this similar sort of um, structure. And, um, you know, they're. They could be of, you know, similar information. A lot of people say they are. There's like different translations of it, but I mean, the, the story is really coming from a specific grid, and none of those crystals are actually accessible anymore. Maybe there's just a few dozen or so. And uh -huh. No one has an original American here at the show, I can almost guarantee. But Comex is the first mine that they started to dig in that region. So this this is at least in the within the family of those Lemurians. What's Where now there's there's Arkansas Lemurian, there's, <laughs> Lemurian, there's Chinese Lemurian, and a lot of it's marketing. People want it. It has the striation. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm. I want to show you the Himalayan porch. Yeah, nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All uh, all hand harvested. They can only mine four months of the year because it's either yeah, it's snowing or look monsoon. At the color. Yeah, nice. Uh, Tangerine it's all this and blush. rose and yeah. really uh, this one out here was one of my favorites if it's still here Can you take that one out in the Sun Christine and show it? Because that one was well kind of an overcast day here, which is unusual in Tucson but We got that like a little city inside of there But Christine's picking some of these out have them on the website maybe or oh, yeah. by the time this video is up They might be sold who knows? <laughs> But really, uh, the nice thing about these uh, Himalayan quartz crystals is that the, each one absolutely is totally unique from the other one. Check out the color on that one, the fade. So you go from like a, a light peach into a blush. And then uh, monster ones over here, this one is really unique. It has what this lasering it's called, where it's like, it's not striations, but it's like uh, cubicle, cubiform. And, yeah, so this one is green spectrum. Like this crystal, uh, the crystals are going all different directions and all up and down. They say they only sell here at the Tucson show. Isn't that color just beautiful? It's so dainty and delicate. I love the blush tone. Million crystals. Okay. Get that one. And to give you an idea of the size of these. So the Himalayas are really mineral rich. 
And so that's how they get such a variety of colors in their quartz. It's hard to catch the sparkle and color on camera, but... Very nice, very nice. Here we are at the top of the little peak here in Tucson and I wanted to come up here to show to show some of the gym shows from this perspective so right here we've got a 900 foot tent that's the 22nd street show there's JGM JGX the, those ones we were just at the Pueblo and the River Park Rapa River uh, Howard Johnson then off in the distance there you can barely see it that's Kino Park uh, there's some way up in uh, Marina or Marana there's one up there and there's uh, in some of the other hotels, actually the convention center is gonna have another one. And am I missing any? Probably, I'm missing like 30 or 40. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a bunch out there, but those are the big ones. So this is, uh, I think today's October 9th or 10th. And wait, wait, wait a second. Wait. October. I'm sorry. Where is 2019? February? <laughs> 2019, February 2019. What was I thinking? Uh, I don't know why I was thinking that date. Uh, so a lot of the shows have ended already, but some of them will go on like, uh, Electric Park Kino show will be going on. Um, some of them only go on a few days, so you need to check if you're yeah. going to be coming to the show. Jogs ends tomorrow too, so that's another one. That's oh yeah, all right, there. out there a bit. Really big one. Uh, but those are some of our favorite shows. Yeah. Some people have asked before, where do we like to shop in Tucson? Where do we like to uh, collect the gemstones? Those are some of our our favorites. Those are the those are the big ones, and uh, there's. You know, there's always people that set up here and there uh, selling. So, uh, yeah, it's worth checking out. Um, yeah, we're going to try and make it our way to as many as we can today, but uh, it's just so much to see here. So Michael got two of these singing bowls. They're made out of solid quartz. He got them a while back, like last year, at an estate sale. Just checking them out. piece off of it in the back yeah of, okay of this 15 tonner and after they cut it the natives from Oregon sued the museum and uh -huh. they won so they can never ever cut it again so because it, that one piece was cut they cut six complete slices like that yeah. you know it's like a little nodule sticking out of the back uh -huh. that they cut off uh -huh. and we got one of the six oh <laughs> so then they cut little pieces and they sell the smaller pieces cheaper per gram than what we paid for the complete slice per gram and that slice is for sale for thirty thousand dollars oh uh, i was way off the slice up top here is a slice from from that, that. Yeah. Yes. okay yes yeah, yeah, see that, see how distinct it is from all the, like the other ones have like this laser beam. Here, look at this one. Get a shot of this one. That, that oh, it's okay, a, that's one from Cuba. So they already have a piece of it from Cuba. Right, right, right. And here, if you want to hold this, this is okay. a piece of the moon. Now, if you dart out the door, I'm gonna. <laughs> is that one thirty-eight thousand, dude? That was no, a... no. I, um, I have no idea what the weight is. Ah. Uh -huh. Uh, my son acquired that, and uh, um, so, so they sell small pieces for one hundred and fifty dollars per gram. Oh wow! What what was that? Is that a, a tech tide or what is that? Yeah, that is a little bit. Libyan desert glass. Oh, so that's actual real stuff. I thought they were selling just glass. 
no, no. And, so, uh, okay. What it is is, okay, it's in the tech type family. Oh. Okay. But it's not classified as a tech type. Uh -huh. It's, uh, Okay, get my side, you can, you can. So it's like maybe glass produced from the friction of a meteorite impact or something? Yeah, something like that. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so I don't know. Well, I'm going to keep my eye out for that because I saw some some dealers selling that last year. I didn't know no, it was no, the real yeah, deal. And then, see, we cut it into stones. Okay. And even fastened it stones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so something else they do that's really cool at this place, uh, you can't see it, but they make the uh, the Damascus blanks yeah, for a knife. Meteorite. Yeah, it's not coming in. Damascus is the process of making steel. Uh, we add the meat meteorite to the steel, whatever they heat and fold it, kind of like taffy. So I pour Look at all these meteorites. Out. These guys specialize in meteorites. Pendants. These little cubes are cool. Campo de Cielo, there's a called, from uh, Peru. Uh, excuse me, Argentina. Yeah, they are from uh, Tucson. Years ago, I did Tucson, Tokyo, Munich, and Tokyo. But now, Josh, the only shows he does is Tucson, Tokyo, Tokyo, and Tokyo. <laughs> start with a T. Okay. And so he just picked up the third Tokyo. I've done two Tokyos a year for. Uh, 30 or 31 years. Oh, wow. oh nice. So right now my son taking over the business. He's going over there. So, so now it frees me up. I can go down to Chile, South America, down to out in the oh, Atacama nice. Desert and go meteorite hunting. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I, think that would be oh, oh and, um, I have more than 50 trips in the last 20 years. Wow. Uh, someday I have to count them on. <laughs> Now, how is the, what is the logistics like? How are you on it so fast to get, to okay, get we this? saw a light on YouTube or something, or, you know. Um, um, some of the guys are, um, um, for example, uh, so up here on, uh, so up here in the mountains, up here on Mount Lemon, uh -huh. um, they have a telescope there, and they have a program for near-Earth objects. So they're looking for near Earth objects. And sometimes, uh, um, whatever the meteorite comes in, uh, 2013, that's the one that fell over in Chelyabinsk, Russia. Oh, the busted out all the windows. And, and these over here uh, are from the, uh, the meteor crater in the Arizona. Uh, that's how I got started years ago, was uh. going to the meteor crater. Oh, really? This one. We just acquired a few days ago. Oh, is that right? There was a, uh, um, there was a guy that came in. Oh, it's heavy. That was in his father's estate. Yeah, that main thing must weigh like 30 okay, pounds. You can see how they sandblasted right here and there. Uh, and at the back, okay, even right there. Oh, God. Yeah, that thing is heavy. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, you wouldn't you believe how dense and heavy it is. It's kind of oxidized there. Uh huh. And it had, so it had a cleachy on it. Uh, yeah, nice. yeah, this is the natural look. Uh, they had cleachy still on there, but I took it off. Uh huh. Cleachy's a local. Uh, uh, the dark brown, yeah. uh, like that brown mud there. Yes, sir. Is this oh, okay. the end? <laughs> <laughs> you want to get it? <laughs> it's like lifting weights. Okay. Is the this Hoba? Is from yeah, the, the biggest one ever. Oh, That's the Hoba. Hoba. And I see my yeah. son just acquired yeah. some of the Hoba. Is that right? <laughs> This is the Hoba meteorite. It looks like right a table. Here, okay. It's one in Namibia. Wow. Oh, here. He has a slice. One okay. slice they cut up into six little pieces. This is a piece of it? And he's got two of the six. Whoa. Left. Look at that. There's so, no uh, striations in it or oh. hardly any. Uh, or, because, we've all, uh, because we polished it, if we etched it, it would have Newman lines. Oh, but, is that what the, the, the uh, etching is? You would is have to have a large piece to see the Newman lines. Oh. So we, so, so we just polished it. So how much are these pieces? Uh, they're like two hundred dollars a gram. It's silk. Oh. In. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But it's never been on the market. Yeah, this is probably oh, the I most popular meteorite in the world. Yeah, it's the largest. Two hundred a gram. World. Pick some up today. <laughs> <laughs> the lunar meteorites here. You uh, have them in rings, huh? The lunar, yes. So I have them in rings. Uh, this guy here, top meteorite. It's actually. Uh, 
uh, so his name is Dustin. Oh Dickens. yeah, we met him last year. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. He got into a bunch of the lunar meteorites. Oh yeah, in yeah, yeah. Okay. He had a big display. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. Yeah. I saw that display. Now, yeah. Okay. So, so I think it's twenty-five. Is the largest collection of top meteorite right meteorite now. Meteorite. Yeah. So this is the largest compilation of lunar meteorites, uh, as far as we know, that's ever been put together uh, in any museum uh, with NASA. Anybody, in fact, uh, we just had the director of the Institute of Meteoritics uh, from the University. University of New Mexico come over and say that this is the best display he's ever seen and they might actually want to use it for remote sensing testing. And uh, it's comprised of five different lunar meteorites um, in this particular bit and it's, it's comprised of about 25 kilograms. And then in the case over here we have another, uh, let's see, another five different uh, lunar meteorites represented from this shelf on down. And this is 11228. It's got a lot of metal, so the, the meteorite that actually hit it and ejected it onto the Earth is incorporated into this particular meteorite, which is kind of neat. And this lunar right over here on the far right has still has fresh glassy fusion crust on it, and we've just never found a lunar uh, that has... We've, so we've never watched one fall. We've seen many, many meteorites fall, but we've never seen a lunar fall. And we've never even found one in North America, Europe, or Asia. They've all been found in Northwest Africa, and this is the freshest lunar meteorite we've ever found. Now, my son Josh and D uh, Dustin are working together because Josh, my son, has 25 years' experience in the business. We yeah, right. the rings are made out of lunar uh, meteorites. So we're doing well with the actual lunar pieces and of stuff. the moon. And so it's only smart for the two kids to work together. Uh, this is their business here. That's this Josh. Is... Yeah. Cosmic Meteorites, Tucson, Arizona. They only sell at the Tucson show and Tokyo, select Tokyo shows. We're all really lucky yeah. to have been here to but see this. The top meteorite, Dustin, he sells and shows around the states. Uh -huh. So Josh is going to load him up with stuff. And Dustin yeah. will load Josh up. Oh, oh nice. So, nice. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so they work together very well. Uh, I feel really privileged to see a piece of the Willamette yeah. in person and the Hoba. And the Hoba. That's, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty special. Those right are two there, exceptionally yeah. rare things, mm -hmm. I gotta tell you. Those, yes, those, those then, are two very rare. You guys see these green rings in here? Those are Moldavite. This is NWA. 7325. And scientists are saying that this is from Mercury. Wow. Of course, we have me, me, uh, meteorites from Mars. Uh, that's those. But this is even. Rough. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. So here's Western the rock. Western Australia. Yeah, Western Australia. And here's the sliced pieces. Yeah, see the Neat. camera doesn't pick up the uh, what? What's the the lines in it called again? It's Wittmannstadt. This is a medium octahedrite. Gibeon is a fine octahedrite, and here is a coarse octahedrite. Oh yeah, quite a oh, difference. Yeah. Gibeon is, you know, uh, crystal structure is real tight. So, fine, medium, and coarse. I like this Western Australia one. The meteorites that are Get one of open. these. Yeah. <laughs> it looks oh. like Australia. There's another yeah, Australian meteorite. <laughs> uh, it's funny. We brought in a third guy from Australia. Uh, Tom Capitani. So, stone <laughs> meteorites will break down into chondrites and achondrites. Oh. And then the chondrites will break down into uh, like H or L or LL, which is high iron, low iron, low, low iron. And then the achondrites will break down into a bunch more groups. And then if it's a stone achondrite from Mars, It'll break down into, it's called SNC, sugar tight, nakla, or chatigne. So, yeah, that thing's like, what, two millimeters there? <laughs> it's hard yeah, to see it there. Like the Martian one. There it is. You guys see it up there? Right up there at the top. <laughs> the little dog. Excuse me, one bit sure. Sure. Look how pretty this is with the pink and the lavender amethyst. Uh -huh. I like that combination, the color combination is really yeah. good. Yeah. Go ahead and Yeah, that's, uh, I've not seen this. Maybe I just don't remember it from last year. This is all from Brazil. Oh, look at these pieces over here. I remember seeing these last year. These gigantic ones, these are like a quarter million dollars. Yeah. Wow. 
big chunk. Alright, we're at one of the Colombian crystal booths. And the Colombian is super fine crystals, but each one is like a prism with rainbows flashing around there. And it'll help if I zoom in. So, final day of the gym show. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we're at Kino Park. Uh, yeah, and it is, uh, as you can tell by the way, Christine's dressed. It is freezing out here, and by freezing, I mean 50. Freezing to us. Yeah, it's pretty chilly, but I think uh, the last it's been a good show for some of the vendors. You can tell the clouds in the distance. It's rained a little bit here. I mean, there's good deals, and there's really interesting stuff, and there's one of a kind stuff. Uh, if we go back over, if they still have the piece, I'll show you the piece. Of, uh, it's called Chrysocolo wood. We'll check that out. I'm still freezing. Even though the sun's out. I see Christine. She's over here. Shungite. Blue lace agate. Shungite. Giant crystals. Obsessed with rose quartz. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, I just yeah, I come to the show, and this show it's really you can see part of it is the logistics of moving all this stuff. That booth over there, Michael's booth that we had the big amethyst at, said it took 20 semi loads to <laughs> to bring in. So, yeah. From LA, but yeah. 